Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be going over the bile esculin test or the bile esculin auger test. Sometimes this auger is abbreviated BEA. Before we jump into it, I want to make sure you know two things. First, I have a playlist on microbiology diagnostic tests that covers all of the selective and differential augers, all of those tests like the catalase test and the lecithinase test and the coagulase test and all of the different stains that you need to be familiar with when you're taking a microbiology lab. So if you're taking a microbiology course, definitely check out that playlist. It has like everything you need. Also, if you want to grab a picture of the final board with all of the answers filled in, just grab it from the link in the description below and that is your free study notes. So now let's talk about bile esculin auger. It is selective and differential. What do these things mean? Selective means that it allows some things to grow while inhibiting others. And then of the things that it allows to grow, the differential aspect is that there are ways to, <clears throat> um, to observe basically metabolic differences to be able to distinguish like one species from another. So in the case of bile esculin auger, it is used to isolate and differentiate uh, enterococcus species. So specifically enterococcus from streptococcus species and other sorts of gram-positive um, cocci. So how does it work? Well, first it's got a few different components we're gonna go over. It has bile salts. Sometimes you'll see these referred to as ox gall or ox bile. Uh, and those are just different words for the same thing, but basically different bile salts, these inhibit the growth of most gram-positive bacteria. So if you have like a mixed culture um, or you have uh, a culture of gram-positive bacteria, gram-positive spheres, and you're not sure what they are, if you put them on bile esculin auger, most of them are going to be inhibited, mainly except enterococci and maybe um, a few strep species. Now, this auger also contains peptic digests of animal tissue uh, and or beef extract. Now, these make it what's known as a complex medium, right? It's not chemically defined where every single batch of bile esculin auger is exactly the same. Um, instead, you know, different lots of animal tissue, different lots of beef extract can have slightly different, you know, macromolecule concentrations and slightly different nutrient concentrations. And so it's what we call a complex media. But the reason that the animal tissue or beef extracts are included is because they provide carbon, nitrogen, and other essential factors. Think things like vitamins, right? There's also auger. Of course, the auger is to make it a solid media. And then it has two other kind of key ingredients. One is esculin. And the other is called ferric citrate. Now it is the esculin and the ferric citrate together that cause a color change that gives what we call a positive reaction or a positive result in the bile esculin test or the bile esculin auger test. This test is also usually done in slant tubes. If you've not seen these before, basically it's where the molten media, you know, the auger has been added, but it's still very, very hot. And so it's a liquid molten consistency and it's poured in tubes. And then the tubes are placed at an angle, usually about a 45 degree angle while they cool and the media solidifies. And then the auger that's inside, even though it's a solid auger, a uh, solid auger medium, it's at a slant. So that's most common for this type of test. Now, how does this test work? So remember we're looking at enterococcus, the plural enterococci. Formerly, formerly these were called group D strep, so you might still see that in some older resources. These produce an enzyme called esculinase. Remember, whenever a word ends in ACE, that means it's an enzyme. So esculinase carries out this reaction. Esculin plus bile with esculinase, this enzyme, esculinase will hydrolyze esculin. 
into a different compound, esculetin, or esculetin, I hear it pronounced both ways, esculetin plus glucose. Okay, and then this product, esculetin, right here, reacts with ferric citrate. Remember, that was the other important ingredient here. So the esculin gets hydrolyzed by that esculinase enzyme. And then the product of that, the esculetin, reacts with the ferric citrate. This forms a phenol precipitate that is a dark brown or black color. Now, you might need to know this. Many bacteria can hydrolyze esculin, but only a very few, mainly the enterococci, can do so in the presence of the bile salts. So that's another way in which the bile salts are selective here. So here's the steps for how you would do a bile esculin auger test. You would take a colony. Typically, this is from a blood auger plate. I am preparing another video that should come out in a few weeks, hopefully, on blood auger plates, how they're made, and on the different hemolysis patterns, the different hemolytic patterns that we see in different types of bacteria. And so when we're looking at, at these, the enterococci, remember they're very closely related to strep, to streptococcus. That's why they used to be classified as streptococci. But these are typically going to be growing on blood auger plates. So you take a colony, <coughs> excuse me, take a colony from a blood auger plate aseptically, right? That means without introducing any kind of contamination. And then you streak it on the slant. So basically, you're taking um, a sterile loop, picking up a colony, and you want to see if that colony is enterococci or something else, and then you streak it, you know, down the surface of the slant. So it's a streak down the surface of the auger. You're not puncturing the auger like you do for some other tests. Then. Um, I'll go ahead and put a streak here too to be for a different colony. And then, this is important, you leave the caps loose. This allows oxygen to be present in here, to diffuse in. So it allows these bacteria ample oxygen for aerobic respiration purposes. So that's why you have to leave the caps loose. You incubate for 35 to 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours, and then you interpret based on the color change. Basically, if there's no color change, none of this dark brown or black, that's considered a negative result. An example of a negative result would come from Streptococcus pyogenes. A positive re result or a positive reaction, like you would get with Enterococcus faecalis, um, is where you see this dark brown or black coloration forming. And again, that's that precipitate because the enterococci have the enzyme that carries out this reaction and gets this product to react with ferric citrate and create that color change. Now, um, you see here, I've kind of drawn this two ways. The, the brown or black color, it could fill the entire auger, especially if you're using a smaller tube for your slant, or it might only um, fill at the upper portion. It just kind of depends on how much activity there is, how many enterococci cells there are, and the time that it takes for the, the precipitates to kind of diffuse through the medium, basically. Remember this playlist right here, Microbiology Diagnostic Tests. You can learn about uh, you know, a dozen more different kinds of augers that you may be studying in class, plus a lot of other diagnostic tests, catalase tests, coagulase tests, lecithinase tests, things like that. So check that out. Good luck studying. Grab your free study notes at the link below. That will include a picture of the final board. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, Biology Professor. Bye.